The death toll from the devastating twin earthquakes which struck Syria and Turkey continues to climb and has surpassed 45,000 victims. Hopes are rising that a new agreement on trade between the UK and the EU will soon be accepted by political parties in Northern Ireland. Actor Sean Penn's Ukraine documentary sits alongside mobile phones and romance in the best of the Berlin International Film Festival. The death toll from the two devastating earthquakes which struck Syria and Turkey on February 6th continues to climb and has surpassed 45,000. This drone footage shows the massive destruction in the Syrian cities of Jindris and Afrin, which have left some 5,000 people homeless. First responders in northwest Syria are leading the efforts to rescue survivors from the rubble, but have said that the international assistance received so far does not come close to meeting the needs of the war-torn rebel-held territory. Meanwhile, Turkish authorities have arrested more contractors and associates responsible for the poor construction of the buildings which collapsed and caused heavy casualties across the country. Turkey has suffered the brunt of the twin quakes with over 38,000 people killed and more than 100,000 people injured. In Antakya, search teams have uncovered the body of Ghana international football player Christian Astru. His body was found under the ruins of his home. The contractor responsible for the building was apprehended at Istanbul airport a week ago, apparently trying to flee the country. A sense of urgency hangs over this weekend's Munich Security Conference as the war in Ukraine approaches the one-year mark. And the country's president is appealing to allies to send more weapons faster. Keep depends on military aid from the West and tight against um, Russian forces. Seen from today's perspective. We need the speed, speed of our agreements, speed of our delivery to strengthen our sling, speed of decisions to limit Russian potential. There is no alternative to speed because it is the speed that the life depends on. There is no alternative to Ukrainian victory. There is no alternative to Ukraine and in the EU. There is no alternative to Ukraine in NATO. Because now it's a great pleasure. But honor. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has warned Western leaders to be cautious when it comes to Moscow, saying the war is dangerous. The annual three-day event brings together around 40 world leaders and diplomats from over 100 countees. Excluding Russia, its representatives will not make an appearance, choosing not to come last year and not receiving an invitation this time around. There are hopes on all sides for a new post-Brexit trade agreement between the UK and the EU. Talks over what's known as the Northern Ireland Protocol are ongoing and even Belfast's most uncompromising politicians are still on board at present. The decisions that will be taken by the Prime Minister and by the European Commission will either consign Northern Ireland to more division or they will clear a path towards healing and to the restoration of the political institutions. Nationalist Sinn Féin say an agreement has to come soon in order to get Northern Ireland's power-sharing institutions back up and running. That's a name shared by the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Well, the test that I've set myself is that we protect Northern Ireland's place in our internal market, that we protect the Belfast Good Friday Agreement, that we resolve the practical issues that the protocol is causing families and businesses. London and Brussels have been negotiating for months over the issue. Actor and activist Sean Penn's documentary about Ukraine received a standing ovation at the 73rd Berlin International Film Festival. Superpower was originally meant to be a profile of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky himself a former actor, but turned into a portrait of the war-torn country after Russia invaded. A different tone was set by the film Blackberry, which nevertheless won critical and public acclaim. Matt Johnson's film portrays the rise and fall of the mobile phone, the symbol of the 2000s, with a dose of drama and humour. The company bearing the film's name once dominated the handset market. Another film that attracted attention at the festival was director Emily Artef's Someday We'll Tell Each Other Everything. The story confronts the traumas of the fall of the Berlin Wall, in which a young woman falls in love with a middle-aged man in the former East Germany.